Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Rodgon and today we're going to have a little review of a product that, you know, seems pretty interesting. My friends over at Gaimon sent me a package with an M106K, which is their version of an Intuos graphics tablet. Uh, that's the Wacom tablets, the ones where you just draw, you know, it's like a little tablet and you just draw on it and then it gets transferred onto your computer. If you don't have one, if you've never played with one, this would be a pretty cool way to get into that type of stuff. And, you know, doing digital artwork and such. That's what I started with, not with a Gaumon, but I started with an Intuos. So we're going to have this to review and to see if it's actually a really good tablet or not. So we have the box. So let's see what's in it, shall we? All right, so inside there's a receipt and woo, it looks really pretty. A big white box with the Gaimon tablet inside. All right, uh, seems like that's everything that's in the box. So we can discard that. Let's see. Yeah, one thing that I've always wondered is why Wacom doesn't have much competition out there. And it's mostly because, you know, other graphics tablets that have, you know, come out aren't really all that great. So, let's see if this one would be a good alternative to it. So, it comes with a little address for the drivers, which I'm going to have to download. And the tablet in itself seems to be very pretty. Ooh. But there you go. As you can see, it has a lot of pre-programmable buttons on the left. So you can set up to undo, redo your favorite tool, zoom, pan, you know, change brushes. Pretty much anything you guys want to set up for your brushes, you can set up like that. Which is always a plus. Like, I've worked with little tiny tablets that don't have the buttons, and you have to have the keyboard, like, right next to it, and it sucks. So, having that like that is great. I'm pretty sure that if you're left-handed, you can just flip it around. I'm not sure, though, so I'm going to have to test that out. It comes with a little pen. I'm guessing this is the stylus. It comes with a little cap. The stylus is very, very similar to that of the Wacom. Here's a Wacom one. Here's the Gaumon one. It has the same buttons. Pretty much the same, same weight, same girth. The tip, it seems to be a little bit firmer. It doesn't come with an eraser though, so I don't know if this actually works as an eraser but similarities are very close came with a little pouch and that pouch came with a little nib like the one that you use to take off the nibs and then you can replace it with another nib which is kind of cool comes with a little cap too so you don't mess up your tip that's something that the wacom ones don't have let's see what else comes with a usb cable um, another USB cable. I'm guessing this is to charge the pen. And what else? What else? What else? I think that's it. So, how about we put this to the test? I'm gonna go download all the drivers, I'm gonna set everything up, and then I'm going to start recording with it so you guys can see what type of stuff and the pressure sensitivity and everything that you can do with it. So, I'll be back in a second. All right, so the first thing that we have to set up is the actual 
drivers when it comes down to the actual pen. So I went ahead and already installed everything. And what you get is this little, little tab whenever you open it. And it gives you options to play around with the different settings in the actual tablet. So the first thing that I went into and I started just switching out different you know buttons within the within the tablet so these are all the express keys and I set up this one for Z for zoom E for eraser control Z for undo and space and shift and all the other ones that I normally use so you can enable them you can enable soft keys which these are the soft keys that's another 16 different keys that you can set up to be able to you know customize your tablet a little bit more which is really cool because that's way more than any Intuos tablet gives you and let's see let's see let's see let's see I'm gonna disable them for now because I don't have a use for them but if you were into you know like programming or gaming or anything like that you can actually set these up to be really really convenient uh, you could probably play like League of Legends or World of Warcraft and Diablo and all that stuff on these with these <laughs> this is actually really, really interesting because it could replace an actual gaming like little tablet. It could be pretty fun. Well, yeah, if you click on any of these, you can set up like different settings. So you can make it with control, alt, shift or Windows keys and then just add strings to it, which I'm guessing it's just different settings with like a lot of different commands that go with it. <laughs> You can make it so it's like a mouse button or you can open up a program, all that stuff. So that's actually really cool. The next thing is, is the stylus pen. Uh, and the stylus pen, you can set it up to have like a really, 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 really soft sensitivity, which means that all your lines are going to be like thicker and squishier. Or you can set it up with the max like stiffness and it means that you're going to have really rigid lines like a ballpoint pen. So this would be like a brush. This would be like a ballpoint pen. So I like to keep it nine in the middle, especially when I'm testing something out because I've never really seen how this performs. So I'm just going to set it in the middle and then just see how it goes from there. Uh, I already set the pen buttons to be the same as my Cintiq. I have it for P for pen in the first one and then I for ink dropper in the second one. Uh, I do this because I just switch back and forth when I'm coloring and inking and I need to be able to have those really quickly. I could also set it up in one of the express keys, but you know, for this certain scenario, I think it's just easier to have it on the pen. Uh, the work area is exactly what it sounds like. It's just you, where do you want the, the tablet to work? If you have a single monitor set up, you can set it up. So it's just that monitor. And then it's full screen or just like a certain ratio of the screen. You can make it so it has like borders, stuff like that. Or you can, if you like working with it vertically, you can set it up like that as well. Uh, if you have multiple monitors like I do, just select the monitor you want to use. And then you just click, yeah. So after having all that nonsense done, let's click apply. Let's close. Let's just move this out to the side. And let's actually start testing out the actual tablet. So off the bat, it feels nice and smooth, even though I'm recording and normally with my monitor setup, it makes it so whenever I'm using Photoshop or my Cintiq, it's a little bit laggy. But when it comes down to right now, it doesn't seem like it's using a lot of processing power, which is good. Uh, express key button seem to be working fine. Let's see, pen buttons. There you go. It's pretty good too. So now the one thing that I like to test out is the sensitivity of the actual, oh, the button. The sensitivity of the actual tablet. Uh, and that means that how much pressure do I have to apply to be able to set up a line? So in this case, actually, it's not bad, guys. Uh, I like to test the, the measure of a tablet by how much 
pressure you have to do to get super thin lines. And if they're not jaggedy or they're, if they're not, you know, like bad. And in this case, you can get really, really thin lines without having to put that much pressure in. Uh, which is a good thing because if you have like a very, very heavy hand, like you end up like just blah, like just doing something like that. But in this case, the thick to thin lines are actually pretty easy. Pretty nice. There's no lag. There's no. Hmm. This is very interesting. <laughs> This is definitely comparable to any any Wacom tablet that I've ever had to do. Uh, and I've used Bamboos, Intuo, Cintiqs. Obviously, Cintiqs are so much better because you actually get to draw on the screen. But those are already like almost $1,500 to $2,000. Uh, these are, I believe, under $100. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, the, I think the only one that you can get under $100 from Wacom is the Bamboo. And that's like the, the lowest one. It's like tiny. It's like 4 by 6 And this is considerably bigger. So, honestly, uh, I can't really see a drawback to this. And this is completely unbiased, guys. Like, I agreed with the people over at Galmon that I would not just give them a positive review if it wasn't something positive because I don't want to like set this up and then send you guys out to buy something that's not going to work. So let's see. Well, then let's try to just draw something really quick. And the thing is, I'm used to actually drawing with a uh, with antique so much. I haven't. It's been like over a year since I drew with an actual like graphic style like this. So, pardon all my shitty lines. It's a completely different way of drawing. You have to get used to the actual. You gotta get used to the fact that you can't. You're not drawing on the screen, and that is a pain in the ass in itself. It definitely has a learning curve. All these tablets, like Wacom, not Wacom, whatever, and they all have a very 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 interesting like learning curve that you have to get used to uh, let's get rid of this okay. but so far I can't really complain like this it's not bad at all I mean, obviously, this this kind of tablet is not going to be necessary if you don't do any digital drawing, right? Like, digital art is probably, in my opinion, the easiest way to be a profitable artist. Because you can just use the artwork and sell it anywhere you want. If you want to make t-shirts, you can just upload it to sites that allow you to make money like that. If you just like do it for fun, you can make prints and sell them, you know, like that, make t-shirts, all that stuff. So digital art in itself is probably some of the most profitable ways to make art. And the only problem is that a lot of the times, 
it's really, really, really expensive to get into these markets. Because if you don't have the extra money to dump on a Cintiq or a Wacom tablet, most of the time, that's what kind of stops people from being able to, to participate in this market. Because it does make a considerable difference having better equipment when it comes down to digital art. Right now, I'm just switching back and forth between like the eraser and the brush. And then going with the undo button. Where's my undo button? There you go. I think it just takes a little longer to draw when it comes down to these tablets than a Cintiq would. But the drawback is not significant enough to warrant the, such a difference in price tag. Yeek. I don't like those eyes. Those eyes are crooked. Let's just make our... No. Oh. There you go. There you go. Okay, erase some highlights. And then let's give her some hair. Let's make a new layer. Let's give her some pink hair. I like pink hair. <laughs> oh, I didn't set the brush size. Do 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 do. Honestly, guys, um, I mean, I don't know how much more I can actually show when it comes down to these type of tablets. Um, but I will be I'm going to be testing it out also in Illustrator and see how it performs there because I know that sometimes graphics tablets don't really perform that well when it comes down to vector programs but let's test it out and see how it is let me just finish drawing a little bit more of this. I'm going to give her a little bit of a tint to her nose. Blend it in. And let's go with a little bit of white. Oh, there you go. I mean, for like a super, super, super quick graphic, you can't complain. <laughs> and some shine to the lips. There you go. And let's get rid of it. I don't like that here. There you go. Beauty. Nice and simple. Super easy. There you go. Uh, let's try it on the Adobe Illustrator. All right, so in Adobe Illustrator, it's a little bit different because it's literally just the pen tool. So it seems like in this one, it's fine. Boom, 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 boom. You can use the brush pen too. I don't really use the brush pen when it comes down to Adobe Illustrator, mostly because I just don't see the point of it. But all right, let's let's see. 
Hmm. Yeah, obviously it's not going to set up the actual thick to thin lines in Adobe Illustrator because, you know, Illustrator isn't like that. But there are certain little tricks that you can do to be able to get some lines like that. You can use the calligraphy brushes and actually be able to set up thick to thin lines. But you have to make sure that you have several settings for all the different angles that you want to do. So, but if you're just working on some vector stuff, it doesn't seem like it's very hard at all. And if you set up your your buttons properly, you can set up the like Alt and Control keys to be able to you know, change everything on the fly that you need. But uh, it seems like it works fine on Adobe Illustrator. But it definitely seems to work better on programs that you don't require to have uh, like pre-existing settings for. Like, for example, well, let's see, what other programs do I have here that I can test it in? I'll have all the Adobe stuff. Um, I could play with League of Legends with it. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else in my computer. But it seems like it definitely works best on programs that already have the predetermined dry, like, you know, like settings when it comes down to actual drawing with thick to thin lines. Uh, so Paint Sci would probably work really good. Uh, Sketchbook Pro would probably work really good. And all those, I prefer them over Photoshop for drawing because you don't have to worry about any extra settings. You just kind of go into it and just draw. And it just makes it so much easier. Plus, you don't have to buy the like damn suite every single month. Like, I make use of it, so I pay for it every month because I use After Effects and I use Illustrator for work and stuff like that. But if you're just a person that just wants to draw and create some digital artwork, it's irrelevant to be paying, you know, $30, $40 a month just for the subscription when you can just get, you know, Manga Studio on sale for like 15 bucks. You know, it's definitely, if you're on a budget, this would be the setting for you. A Gaumont tablet and Manga Studio Pro. And you'd be spending less than a hundred bucks. And then you're pretty much set up for any sort of design, you know, that you want to do. So I think uh with that it's we're pretty much wrapped up here. So let's close this all up and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts. Alright guys, so let's close up this review with my final thoughts on the product. I actually took the time to play around with it a couple, you know, hours in between the video uh, so that I would be able to give you guys a pretty interesting review and I, like a pretty comprehensive review with the actual tablet. So my first thoughts is the tablet in itself is actually really well made, really well made. Uh, I love the implementation of all the buttons and all the soft keys are actually very convenient when it comes down to certain you know, aspects of you know, designing. It helps you immensely, and I use them on my Cintiq all the time. So having them on an actual tablet is actually really good. Second thoughts, the pen. Only problem with the pen is that you have to charge it. Uh, doesn't matter, you can have it like plugged in and actually while you're drawing and you know if it's not too much of inconvenience it's fine you know the pen itself the tip is really nice very comparable to my Cintiq you know it's very much the same thing buttons seem to work you know relatively well and it's not too heavy it's not too light it doesn't feel cheap which is a good thing and you know besides from the point that it doesn't have an eraser which is fine because you can just set up a program key for that. But it's it's not a bad tablet and you can get it online. Like I was just looking at it right now. And 
online they normally go for like 62 bucks if they're on sale you can get them under 50 dollars and it's not bad at all because if you combine this with a program like clip you know clip studio paint pro or manga studio it's just same thing or Sai or any other software that you <coughs> sorry any other software that's relatively cheap and very effective you already have a whole design studio at your fingertips so i actually really like this program <coughs> oh. i actually really like this tablet uh, if i didn't have a cintiq or if i needed something portable this is going to be my go-to uh, the guys over at Gaumon, uh gave me a lot of information that they want me to share with you guys. So go back down to the description of the video. And there's like discount codes and stuff like that for Amazon. So you guys can get it as well. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Still trying to get over the whole sickness thing. But uh, with that... I hope that you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, it's a little bit more intensive than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I think I covered all the aspects of everything that you really need in order to be able to make a decision if you want to get this tablet or not. If you guys are looking for a Wacom tablet, but you want something more affordable that's going to have the same features and it's just going to look really pretty too, I would suggest this guy. Definitely, definitely worth the money. Uh, and we'll see, you know, maybe that will down the line uh, if there's other products that I can review f for people and then, you know, maybe suggest some better stuff for you guys in the future. But this is definitely your go to if you want a tablet and you're, you know, on a budget. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope my coughing didn't affect it too much. Hope you guys didn't gross you out. Uh, but um, Thank you guys at Gaumon for sending me this tablet to review and I hope that it helps all you guys out there when you guys are trying to find something, you know, to do some digital art with. So I will catch you guys in the next one and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I know it's a little bit different than the other videos that I upload, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyways. I leave you guys here with a link to some videos on the left and the right if you guys want to see some more of my stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.